Hey guys and girls, what's up? Welcome to another episode of QC Fishing. Today's episode, I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit of tips, not how to live scope fish, but I'm going to be giving you some tips, some tricks that I do um, to help me live scope fish better. It's a new technique using a live imaging system like a Garmin Live Scope, Lawrence Active Target, or the Humminbird Mega Live to see these fish, cast to them, and catch them. So the first main tip that I'm gonna give you guys is making sure that you have clean power to your to your box and to your graph. If you're not having clean power, you're gonna get a lot of clutter on the screen. You're not gonna be able to see your bait. You're not gonna be able to see fish that far away from the boat. I've had plenty of times where uh, if I get within 50 feet of a fish that was in an active position, a fish that I could catch, if I get within 50 feet of it, I can see it sink to the bottom or dart away from the boat. So making sure that you can see these fish further away is always gonna be better. As if they don't know you're there, you have a way better chance of catching them. And it also helps you see your bait a lot further away from the boat. Um, some guys I know, they don't have good power. They can only see their, their bait 20, 30, 35 feet away from the boat. And you're really not being able to see exactly where your bait is in relation to the fish. And you're not gonna be presenting a bait correctly. So making sure that you have clean power is one of the best things that you could do. That's my number one tip right now. So the second tip that I've got for everybody is bait selection. There's two main categories that I break it up to, and it's a reaction and then a slow moving bait. Depending on where the fish is at in the water column will dictate if I'm using a reaction bait or if I'm using a slower moving bait. If I'm in shallow water where it doesn't really matter, I can get away with using either. If we're in deeper water and the fish are suspended up higher in the upper half of the water column, uh, I'd be using a reaction bait, and the reaction baits that I'll be using is like a jerk bait, a swim bait, and an Alabama rig. These baits are bigger than your average size bait, besides the jerk bait, but the swim bait and the Alabama rig are bigger baits. They're going to show up as a pretty big return on your live imaging system. You'll be able to see them a lot better. You'll be able to see when you're getting close to the fish. Uh, you can speed it up, and they've got a lot of drawing power to them. So even if fish aren't that hungry, it's a bait that they're going to come look at. Um, follow it and you can probably get a bear uh, probably get them to bite at some point a jerk bait's also really another great tool because you can change up your cadence depending on the day if it's calm sunny windy uh, if the fish is in a funk or something like that every fish is different um, but you can change up your cadence and you can really see how these fish react to the jerk bait and those reaction baits are going to be what i'm using if they're in the upper half of the water column if i'm in deeper water when the fish are in the lower half of the water column uh, in deeper water, that's when we be using a slow moving bait, like a drop shot and a Ned Rig or tube or something like that. I'm really focusing on making the bait fall on top of the fish. It's just like in flipping, when you're flipping down the bank, the first 95% of your bites are gonna come on that initial fall. It's not gonna be really when you're dragging it back to the boat. You get bites doing that, but most of the time your bites are gonna be coming on that initial fall. These fish can see the bait falling down for a long time. They're gonna come over and pick it up as soon as it hits the bottom. So that's where a drop shot net rig tube come into play. And I wanna make sure that I can see my baits dropping. And that's where clean power comes into play. Being able to see your small baits like a net rig and a tube fall into the bottom is key to know how long you have to wait for it to sink to the bottom. If the fish is swim over to look at it, stuff like that. Um, but drop shots, net rigs, tubes are gonna be key for when the bait or when the fish is in the lower half of the water column in a little bit deeper water. I can see the fish, I can see the bait, I know where I know where everything's at, and most of the time they're gonna bite a slower moving bait. When it when it comes right in front of their face, they don't know what to do, they're just gonna eat it. Um, so that's tip number two, is bait selection. Tip number three is gonna be a simple one. You might be like, Hugh, why are you even including this? But it's making sure your live imaging system transducer is straight. I see a lot of guys mount their transducers on the shaft of their troll motor, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you just have to make sure that it's lined up straight. Make sure the head of your troll motor is lined up with it. My transducer is actually mounted on the barrel and what that allows me to do is make sure that it's lined up perfectly straight with the, with the, the whole troll motor. I can see the head of my troll motor, what direction it's facing, and I know my transducer is facing exactly where I'm going. I've seen guys mount their transducers on the shaft and they've been a little cockeyed either way and they're like, why can't I see my bait further out than like 20 feet or something like that. So making sure that your Garmin transducer or any live imaging transducer is mounted straight is really going to be key uh, to seeing your bait as far as you can if you're casting right where your troll motor is looking. The last tip that I've got for you guys is really paying attention to your Garmin. Um, what fish you catch, what fish you don't catch. 
these fish will act differently. Like sometimes you see walleye, sometimes you see drum, sometimes you see carp, catfish, and hopefully you see a lot of bass on there, but it's really hard to tell at first what type of fish you're seeing on your graph. Um, you can see how they act, how they swim. You can really start to tell the difference between these fish in the makeup, how hard, um, how hard the return is on your Garmin or whatever, whatever fish finder you've got. But um, there's little key differences between each type of fish, the way it looks on your uh, fish finder, and that'll help you to tell what type of fish it is. So it's not something you can do overnight. This takes a lot of time to practice with it. I'm still pretty new to Garmin. I cast it every single thing, um, or I cast it almost every single thing because I just I'm trying to get better at seeing what type of fish is which on it because it's a still new to me technology. Um, I know other guys are really good at it. I'm trying to get better at figuring out which is a gar, what's what's everything. Um, so if you can pay attention to how a fish swims, what it looks like, the size, the blob of the fish. It'll help you in the long run to help maybe eliminate time that you would spend casting at a fish that isn't even a bass. Um, so it does take a lot of time. I'm not perfect at it, I'll admit that. Um, but I am working hard at it to look at my Garmin, every single fish that I cast to, what it looks like, how it's swimming, how it reacts to my baits too, um, to see if it's a catchable fish or not, or even if it's a bass. So that was my last tip for you guys. So hopefully you guys learned something. Live scoping is a new technology, new technique really hard to learn but if you spend a lot of time on it you get better and it can be a game changer for everybody so hopefully you guys learned something if you if you got another tip make sure to comment that below and uh, i'll catch you guys next time